Hi there, my name is John Slibick, and I'm an Applications Engineer here with Hawk Rig Systems. Today I'm going to be going over SolidWorks Composer, 5 Great Time Saving Tips and Tricks. So let's just look at a summary here. So first we're going to talk about use of cutting planes, then we're going to go over building your 2D library, then we're going to talk about applying custom drawing templates, fourth we are go over the copy transformation tool, and fifth we're going to talk about using selection groups. Okay, so let's start with cutting planes. Let's take a look at this in Composer. Cutting planes are accessed from the Author tab, also known as Section Views. And they're on the far right. Now they're under the Author tab because a cutting plane is considered a collaborative actor and therefore will appear under the Collaboration tab. To create the plane, just click on the button, and as you hover on the screen here, you notice as you go into your other geometry, you're going to get a normal arrow that appears. And if you just click down, you're going to get the actual section or the, the cutting plane appear. And all you do is drag the plane up until the spot that you want. Now a few things on the properties of this plane here. If you go down into the, the properties of this here, one of the main ones is the cap and color. And if you change that, you might want to change that depending on how you, you, you see fit. Another thing that I typically like to do is turn the opacity of the plane itself down. Now you can also create compound planes. Uh, what I mean by that is you can create multiple cutting planes. So for example, if I wanted a plane going from the top down, and say actually I didn't have a flat face to pick on. What you can do is you can pick on that plane and go to the far left and you can click on the axis. Okay, and under there, you can actually change this to something else. So if you wanted to go on the X, for example, you can do that. Now you notice how it's cutting the wrong way. So you can either flip that by going to the positive version of that, or you can set the flip button. Now in this case here, I'm going to go to the, the Z negative and I'm just going to cut up into there and I'm going to turn the opacity of that down and uh, you notice how it actually hid my original cutting plane. Now what you're going to have to do is go to the collaboration tab and then just turn that other plane on if you really wanted a uh, kind of a fancy cut. And one other thing you can do here, let's go to another view, is if you wanted to create a cutting plane but selectively cut your model, you could very well do that. Now let's do that here. I'm just going to click on the side of this body and let's make sure that this is going the proper way, Z negative. And I want that to go about halfway through, but the thing here, I only want to cut the body, let's say. Now I'm going to have to create a camera view to do this because I'm going to have to rotate. And what you do is you click on the pieces that you want cut. Actually, let's click on the, the bumper, uh, let's say, front and rear bumper, the body, and the bottom uh, bottom panel. And let's go back to our camera view, and what you do is just apply to selection, and then we're going to take that plane, going to turn the opacity down, and you see there we go, we've got the, uh, you know, the front and rear bumpers have been cut, the shell body, and then the lower plate itself. And then what we can do, of course, is just create a view with that, and then delete our camera. All right, next we're going to talk about building your 2D library. Switching back to Composer, let's take a look at how you build this image library. Now your 2D image library is typically going to be one of two things. It's either going to be uh, images of hardware, or it could also be images of, uh, of tools that you're potentially going to be using as part of your instructions. Now typically what you start with uh, when you're going to be creating these in Composer is a template file itself. So I've actually started with this template file and all I've really done in this is if I go into the properties under the paper space is we set a square proportioned space here. So I just set this to 100 by 100 and you also want to set that in the default, do the default document properties because remember we're going to be importing models here and you want the, the default to be applying every time. So change those, and then um, 
what so typically what you would do is um, is you could either go to something like GrabCAD or 3D Content Central and grab some models that have already been, already been done there and import them. And so that's what you would do here is you go to File, Open, and then I've got this drill part here. And then what you do is you merge into the current document. Now I've already gone and imported that just to save a bit of time here. So let's go to the assembly tab and that drill has been imported under the root here and I'm just going to turn that on and then we're going to zoom this in a bit. Now a few things that we're going to need to do to prepare this. Uh, first of all it's got a bunch of colors on here, we don't really want that. Let's click on the model itself here and then what I'm going to do is change the color and we're going to make it just kind of a, a gray or an off gray kind of color. That way it's going to be um, you know, at least contrast itself in the background. And let's go to the rendering style. So on the rendering tab, you want to go to the mode and change this to flat technical. And this is just going to be much better for the purpose that we have on hand here. And it's really important to make sure you get the flat technical and not any of the other ones. Uh, it's just going to work much better in terms of saving this. Now another thing that, uh, that you're going to want to do here is if you dig down in the properties, there is an outline width. Now the outline width is essentially all the, the black edges on here. And you want to kind of up that a little bit. Uh, if I make that 3, for example, uh, maybe 4, a little bit darker, uh, it's kind of a, a kind of a good spot to go on. And then you just kind of want to orient this in a manner that uh, you know, you're going to want to spit out to an image. And then, um, essentially, that's all you really need to do for it at this point. Uh, the only final thing that you would do is really spit this out uh, to an image. And you would save that by going to the Workshops tab, go to the High Resolution Image. And then what you're going to want to do is, uh, is you can set, the, set this up to something high if you want. Uh, 300 DPI, DPI is usually pretty good. I'm just going to keep... Uh, everything else as it is and then what I'm going to do is just do a save as and I'm going to save this into a folder that I've got set up so this is the image library folder that I'm going to be saving this to and I'm going to save this as a bitmap file okay so you can see once I switch to bitmap I get all the images that come with this so these images are actually ship stock with composer and we'll get to using these in one second but I'm just gonna gonna say this right here, and I'm gonna call this tool drill, and then I'm gonna hit save. Okay, now that we save that image out, just one little thing I'm gonna want to do. Let's go back to our views tab here. Uh, I forgot that we want to update our view. Like in this document, you're probably gonna want to use it to create several different tools, so you can basically have a view for each one of those if you wanted. Now let's uh, let's go show this image being used. Uh, I've got another document we can uh, experiment with this in here. Uh, let's just use it right, uh, let's say right here on this very on the on the cover view. Now to make use of the image library, just go to image library under the workshops, and this is going to point at your image library. So this is the location that I saved. You can see here the drill is right there. The location I saved the drill image in. Uh, the folder is right in the top. Again, this is uh, stock with Composer, so all these images in here you have access to. And I typically like to just save them into the same folder or a subfolder from it. And all you're going to do is take the grill and we're going to drag and drop it onto our view here. So let's just uh, position that. Let's, uh, oops, let's make that a little bit smaller. And then what you can do is, is basically just use this to detail various operations that you're going to do. And I can go down and I can put a tooltip on this, uh, and an attachment. Say I want to, I want to say that you know the the drill is going to be used uh, there. So let's just move that down. You know, just as an example, as uh, something you can do. So. Yeah, it's just one example, but you're going to want to really build up a lot of these. Uh, I'm saying a lot of people like to use hardware as well, toolbox items. Just something to think about. Third on our list, we can talk about applying custom drawing templates. So this is actually a very popular request from people is wanting to apply 
your own custom drawing template to a composer document. Now it is fairly straightforward. Uh, there is a little trick to it though. Uh, to start with, let, let's create a new view. And this view, I don't want anything turned on in this view yet. And I'm gonna just name this my uh, drawing title block, okay? And let's update this view. And the trick is, you basically just, uh, actually, to start with, I'm going to have to change my, my format. Now, because I don't want this to go completely uh, across the page here, let's just put a format of, let's say, 1.4 for now. I'll uh, figure this out after. Uh, we start with that, and then we're just going to throw down an image 2D under the author tab. And once we have that, uh, let's hit escape to clear the tool. All you really need to do is set the uh, set the map path. And what you do is you set that up. And I've got a, a JPEG file of a template. And this is really the, the, the trick to it is you need the JPEG before you can do this. Now to, to get that JPEG, uh, I'm not really gonna go over that process, but essentially what you would do is print a PDF out of SolidWorks, of your drawing, whatever it is you want to bring in here as an image, and then you're going to have to use some sort of an Adobe product or some kind of uh, third-party product that is going to save a PDF into a JPEG. That's just one way, um, but uh, is the way that this one was done. Now, uh, all I'm going to do is, is take this, I'm going to hold my Shift key, and I'm going to drag this until it goes just off the page a little bit. And then let's just kind of center this in there. I'm not going to fuss with this too much, but just so that it fills this, you know. And then what you're going to want to do is uh, two different things here. So number one, you want to make this a background, background layer. And then under freeze, you want to say freeze. And then I'm going to update that view. And then... Um, that's pretty much uh, all there's to it. So with it frozen and a background like that, I, I can't actually click the background image. So that's why we do the background. And just to show you here, if we go to assembly and we turn on the, um, you know, the actor there, we can actually get this uh, showing up in front of it. And then now uh, we can actually create, you know, maybe we wanted a, uh, you know, a new view with this. We could very well create a few views and actually have our title block on there now. Next on the list, we're going to go over the copy transformation tool. Taking a look at this fourth one in Composer, copy transformation. Let's take a look at the engine view I've got set up here. So say you want to do an exploded view. Let's just uh, just translate some things out here. Let's translate a few of these. So I'm going to pull pull this out and say that we're doing a uh, you know an exploded view on this. And we've got the actually let's pull this back a little bit. We've got all this hardware in here that's uh, that's locking this down and fastening it in there. Now uh, now normally if you're pulling pulling things across, transforming, and you make the mistake of of not doing them all at once. So there's four of these, and I only did one of them. Now, you could you could eyeball this if you wanted to. By the way, a little trick, if you hold your Alt key, uh, you, you'll actually be able to highlight uh, much more clear what you're clicking on here. So I, I want the red line, uh, and this wasn't clear, so I hold that down, and I drag it. Now, I was saying it's, you know, I could eyeball this and, uh, and pull this across, and that would kind of look okay, I guess. But it's still inevitably not the same transformation. So what you, what you can do here, let's actually kick these back. By the way, if you transform something incorrectly and you want to just throw it back to where it came from, highlight them, and you want to hit Restore Neutral Position under the Transform tab. So let's so let's do this again. Let's just pull the, the one of these out like so. And you, you've got two things you can do here. Now, number one... It is actually a copy, uh, sorry, second to neutral properties. Uh, you want to hit the copy transformation button under the transform tab. Okay, so you're going to click on that. Actually, we, we need to uh, 
click on what we want to transform first, and then we go to copy transformation. And you're going to see here as I highlight over the hardware and I click down, that's going to copy that transformation. And that's uh, that's really all there is to that. That I mean, that goes for anything in here. If I wanted if I wanted these pieces to come out to where this uh, this head is here, I could do the same thing. Copy transformation, click on that, and that's going to come out with it. Finally, uh, to end off our list here, we're going to talk about using selection groups. Now, selection sets, if we take a look at this in Composer, are very, very simple. These are actually, uh, we call actually call, we call them selection groups or selection sets, uh, same sort of uh, idea. Now, to get at these, they're under the Assembly tab in Composer, and right there, selection sets. These are actually identical to the way these work in SOLIDWORKS assembly. And uh, so let's just create a few here. Now, for example, maybe you want a, uh, you want to be able to select your tires, all of them at once, very, very quickly. So what you do is you, you highlight everything that goes into a set, and then you go to the top of your tree here, your assembly tree, and you create selection set. Okay, and we can name this if we want, uh, tires. And I'll create, uh, what else here? Let's create one for the, the bumpers, I guess. Uh, create the two of those. And this will be the bumpers. And let's just, uh, I guess, collapse our tree down a bit here so that we can see these. Now, the selection sets are right at the bottom here. And let's, uh, let's double click on our view. That way we kind of center that. And you see the way these work is uh, just like in SOLIDWORKS assembly. I click on the bumper set and I select all the bumpers. I click on the tire set and it highlights everything that was in there. And the nice thing with this is, uh, is you can create selection sets of say all your hardware or something like that. Maybe something that's commonly styled. You know, like these, these tires are, are commonly styled. So I could, I could quickly change, you know, the color on these tires very, very fast if I really wanted to. Now, one other thing about selection sets that uh, not everybody really thinks about is you can use it for not only the, the geometry actors, but you can use it for the collaborative actors. So, uh, for example, if you wanted a quick way to hide all your callouts on your, your screen or, you know, whatever, a quick way to select them all, you can, you can turn these into a selection set. So go to your assembly, uh, you go to create a selection set, and these will be my, I don't know, exploded, I don't know, I'll just say page two callouts, even though it's not really page two, but, and then those will actually show up uh, right in here as a uh, selection set. Now, now the selection set for the callouts do not, doesn't show up under assembly, it shows up under collaboration, and right here. So just as a summary here, what we went over today, we talked about cutting planes to begin with. Then we went over building your 2D library. Third, we talked about applying custom drawing templates. Then we went over the copy transformation tool. And lastly, we discussed using selection groups. Well, thanks for joining us today for the five great time-saving tips and tricks from SOLIDWORKS Composer. If you found the information useful, please hit up our YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button or check out our blogs on our website.